from Yemen. What happened, for instance, in Italy, the country where I was born, is that in the moment in which regulations in the time passed to actually allow gambling, the first people that were up for drugs, the first people that bought these places, were the same politicians that were making a judgment. And especially, I would like to state that, that you like it or not, people will gamble. I know people that like to gamble, Chinese people love to gamble. I was recently passing through San Francisco, there is a park nearby Chinatown. You go there, like, everyone is gambling. Like, it's not, like, allowed, but you see, like, all these old Chinese people, they love it. How can you stop it? I mean, they will hide and hide and hide, but do it. So, basically, I think there is an impact on the grassroots. And this is just a little example. Grassroots means, actually, that if there is a scene, if there is a movement, the authentic people from that scene will be in there, and not just like some, some straw man. There is an impact on the discourse on neutrality. I think that's pretty obvious to you. Uh, we come from a time in which neutrality is a sacred grail, probably we stay as such. I would argue that the idea of net neutrality is more like a, an ideal, it's like a, it's a, it's more an asymptotic uh, thought. You know, we can get closer to neutrality. I mean, as I say, liberalism tried to do so by quantifying everything, but we won't ever get there. But we are getting closer with Bitcoin. A clear example has been the case of Wikileaks. The, the project that at a certain point uh, brought uh, even uh, Julian Assange to have a little fight, even with Daniel, and actually grow the project in a certain direction, was to actually professionalize it and quantify the money of the donors and actually scale it up. It couldn't, because at the end, it should have been free to do it. It's a journalistic project, and it should have been free to actually capitalize on the success of it. He hasn't been, he has been cut off, the, the Visa and MasterCard and, uh, and the other companies cut off his, uh, his fight. This was not neutrality. This enraged uh, a lot, even the movement of anonymous home out of that and on a, on a next level, because that path was broken. The neutrality, the fact that we have in society a certain feedback loop that will actually help to change society and improve it, and that was broken, the fact of neutrality there. Another impact, migrants, something uh, closer also to my kind of uh, team. I've been uh, Spotting houses also with the idea that uh, borders are uh, are not really something that uh, uh, are not legitimate. That we should actually uh, let people circulate, and uh, and if we really want to put them in prison, if we really, if you really, I don't, but uh, uh, I mean, let's leave aside the discussion on prison, uh, then they should be they should be in prison for their crime, not for being coming from other states. And therefore, I you know, spent some time of my life actually creating gray zones in which people could actually exist and live their life again. Because many times migrants come, uh, are refugees, come from a very difficult situation and they are forced to leave. So into these economies, be that they are refugees or simply migrants looking for fortune, Bitcoin could have an enormous impact. Just think of these economies. How many people nowadays and in the future we are going to have in our cities, in our airports, in our uh, conference halls, in our people that are just arrived, they find the most humble jobs and they will do them and they will gain that money which is worth something else on the other side of the world and send it over there. They will build something over there with their families. There are a lot of people that are actually maintaining families by traveling across and sending money back. It's a huge flow of money. This huge flow of money is taxated heavily. MoneyGram and Western Union are the two big monopolies on this. PayPal is just competing by just a little bit. You don't have easy change of PayPal in, in Africa. You cannot withdraw. So, these two companies say that they don't supply a charge, but in fact, on the change that they do on the currency, they apply a 20%. I can't, it's just, right. which, is, uh, which is a 
product, the temperature, they are just like using up the work, the labor of people abroad. And these people have no other way to do it. They cannot transfer this immaterial value from one place to the other after their hard day of work because there is no way. This means also that by birth, you can be lucky or you can be not. Because if you're born in Africa, you can open a bank account and open a PayPal account and then withdraw from that. You can do business. Say you are really good with computers, because nowadays you get computers even there. And say you are very good with movies, making a movie or something. Can you actually produce yourself easily? If you look into the financial maze there, you will find out that it is extremely difficult to get into the room, to wire in 